Hello students, welcome back to my poetry class. Today we are going to discuss about Imtiyaz Dharkar's Parda 1. Imtiyaz Dharkar is a British poet of renown who has been awarded with Queen's Gold Medal. Her origin is from Pakistan and in this poem she is exploring the Islamic culture of Pakistan where the women are highly marginalized and alienated through the socio-cultural ethos. This poem though is particularly about a Muslim girl and her inner feelings, agonies, reflections, etc. But the poem is not only confined to the Islamic culture or a Muslim girl, rather it represents in a broader sense the wholeness of femininity or the feminine world irrespective of culture, religion, space, society, etc. So the title Parda 1 is because of there is a second poem of Imtiyaz Dharkar which is also named as Parda 2 and there are other poets like Sylvia Plath, Sarojini Naidu who had also written with the title of Parda and Parda Asin and the poem of Imtiyaz Dharkar is more close to that of Sylvia Plath in its spirit of representation. However, as we are taking up this poem for the CC class, so I am not going into an in-depth analysis of the poem or the poetic qualities of Dharkar. Rather, we will be having a simple analysis of the poem and its significance. So, coming to the title, the Parda is here is used as a universal symbol, a universal symbol of discrimination and alienation on the part of the woman. Because Parda in its different name is used in different religion or cultures all over the world and Parda is not all the time a physical object but also it is a mental object. It is working in the level of the mind as well. Therefore, the title is highly symbolic. And the poem begins in a very familiar old narrative of narrating a story or a moral story. That is, one day they said, she was old enough to learn some shame. So, the girl child who was with the society in her innocent way, in her simple way, suddenly one day she discovers that she has to take up the spirit of shame or the burden of shame on herself because she has grown up to be a woman and her poverty, her coming into womanhood is rather treated as a shame. It is not a celebration, it is not any occasion of pleasure but rather it is an occasion of 
discrimination. She found it came naturally. And this isolation, this discrimination on the part of the society to a girl who is achieving womanhood is not unnatural to her. And the poet is very simply suggesting that why this is natural? Because generation after generation of women, they have accepted, they have grown up and they have been also the voices of that patriarchy which is bringing the womanhood or the sexuality within womanhood as a shame. Parda is a kind of safety. The body finds a place to hide. And then the poet is telling, when there comes a sense of shame, so the girl is encouraged or the girl is advised to take up a parda. And that parda, taking a parda, or a burka, as it seems very natural, but the same thing, the same object has become a kind of safety. It provides the girl safety from the gauges of the male or the looks of the male. The very same people who were looking at her as a daughter, as a niece, as a sister, suddenly they have started looking at her as an object of desire, as a creature of desire. So, the Parda is providing the safety from these uncomfortable looks. The body finds a place to hide. So, the Parda is becoming a private space for the woman, for that grown-up girl who is trying to hide herself behind that sense of shame and that sense of committing something by which she has become an object of desire in the eyes of all these people. The cloth fans out against the skin, much like the earth that falls on coffins after they put dead men in. And the parda on her body is spread all over. She is trying to cover her body completely within the parda, as if it is like her skin, which is the outer cover of her body. So the parda becomes the outer cover of her body which is becoming a part and parcel of her very existence. Therefore, it is much like the earth that falls on coffins after they put dead men in. That she is comparing it with an image, an imagery that is when a dead man is buried in the grave in the Islamic culture, in that janaza, in that prayer or the funeral ritual, people put lumps of earth on that coffin to bury it. So the parda is like those lumps of earth being thrown at her as if the whole patriarchy is trying to hide her behind the parda as they hide the dead body in the grave. People she has known stand up, sit down as they have always done. And those people who are very familiar to her right from her childhood, who knew her as a child, those very set of people are now behaving very strangely. 
they are trying to poke their eyes they are trying to look hither and thither to discover if any part of her body is exposed from that all covering parda from that burka they are trying to convert their own illicit desire their own illegal desires into the scrutinizing spirit of society and religion so that lies the irony their eyes are looking for if any part of the body of that woman is exposed and they will be gratifying their lost but at the same time they are trying to justify it through the religious or ethical guardianship but they make different angles in the light their eyes aslant a little sly and they make different angles means they are trying to explore the very body because for the patriarchy the woman is nothing but a body a body of desire a body of sexual objectification therefore they are looking from different angles at her in the light their eyes are slant sometimes their eyes are also looking in a very slanted manner as if they will pierce through the parda the burqa to find out the place to find out the body a little sly and their behavior their looks their gazes are full of that uncomfortable desire that slyness she half remembers things from someone else's life the girl in this way who has been discriminated who has been marginalized and who has been isolated within the parda feels and remembers about these experiences of her which are similar to the experiences of the other women in her family in her society she half remembers things from someone else's life she is comparing it with the life of the other woman she had known and she thinks there is a greater similarity perhaps from yours or mine and she may be trying to learn from the life of you and me as the poet is telling she is trying to imitate the behavior of women in a patriarchal conservative society carefully carrying what we do not own and she is trying to be very careful in carrying what we do not own carrying our body because in this patriarchal society the woman is not the mistress of her body the body belongs to the society she has only to manage it she has only to save it she has only to keep it for the patriarchal society she is not the mistress of her body between the thighs a sense of sin and between her two thighs the very sex organ is considered as a sin as long as she is having that status of a woman 
who is matured into the stage of sexual existence she is considered by the patriarchy as a sin because it doesn't belong to her she is not the mistress of her own life she is not having the legitimacy of desire if anything is there it belongs to the patriarchy we sit still letting the clock grow and why it is a sin because it is there with her she is a sinful creature because she is having some desire for herself and only this sin will be converted into the purified existence when patriarchy will possess her when patriarchy will be the master of her body so we sit still the woman or that grown up girl is sitting still within the burqa letting the clock grow and she is so apprehensive that she is wishing as if let the burqa let the parda grow and cover her from all sides in all angles she wants to be buried within it because she is so much agonized by this discrimination of the patriarch or the male dominated society a little closer to our skin so she wants as if there should not be any gap between the parda the cloth and her skin as if it should come tightly sticking to her body so that the uncomfortable gazes the uncomfortable looks the probing looks of the male will not enter into her will not touch her a light filters in word through our bodies walls but let a little later she realizes that in spite of being discriminated in spite of being agonized in spite of being subjugated in a very merciless manner still there is a light somewhere there is a bit of happiness a light filters inward through our body's walls and what is that light the light is her own physical sensations her own feelings her own desires which is giving her the pleasure voices speak inside us she discovers within her own body there is a spirit there is a sensation there is a desire which belongs to her and that is the voice her own desire is the voice echoing in the spaces we have just left and as if her desire as if her physical sensation is giving an echo in the space just left that space which watch her privacy which watch her space when she was not a woman she was a girl and she was moving around she was a part of the socio cultural space and which now she left as if her desire as if her wish is that to fulfill to fill up that space to declare to the society that she is also having her own independent spirit own desire own mind own pleasure she stands outside herself sometimes in all four corners of a room so sometimes she observes herself as if standing outside her own body and looking at her own body 
that means she is also looking at herself from a mirror or from any reflection she is trying to adore she is trying to appreciate her own physical beauty her own physical symmetry her own physical sensations she stands outside herself sometimes in all four corners of a room she is looking at herself from different angles wherever she goes she is always inching past herself and wherever she goes in that room she is not going outside because she is living a confined life so within her confinement she is looking at herself from different angles the angles of physical desire the angles of spirituality the angles of individuality the angles of social relationship and everywhere she is inching past herself she is finding that she can go past herself she has the capability to live by herself to establish her own individuality as if she were a clod of earth and the roots as well scratching for a hold between the first and second rib but she realizes that her spiritual mental or physical ambitions or desires are mercilessly being rejected and confined as if she is a clod of earth as if she is a mere object she is not a living creature and the root size will scratching for a hold and she is trying to hold she is trying to hold on to some roots that i am also a human being i am also a living creature and between the first and second rib so where she discovers her origin the origin she is discovering in the first and second rib it is a reference to the bible the bible says that god created man and he was created by god to accompany adam and he was created from the rib of adam so in religious convention the woman is created out of a small part of man so woman is highly inferior the woman is a creation of man which is rejecting the natural biological convention of woman as the mother or the creator of man so the patriarchal society is rejecting the natural convention the natural concept that woman is the mother of man here the man is superior to woman because woman is created from a rib of man so in this way the woman is trying to explore her origin but there also she finds that she has been decimated she had been marginalized as simply a small part of man's existence passing constantly out of her own hands into the corner of someone else's eyes and in this way the woman is passing constantly out of her own hands she is not in control of her own self she is not in control of her own power the hands symbolizing 
her control, her self-control. Rather, she is controlled by the patriarchy, the man-dominated society. She is controlled by the man, not by herself, into the corner of someone else's eyes. And she is controlled by the tune of the man. How the man looks at her, whether in his look there is any appreciation, no. In the corner of the eyes of the man, there is always a sense of neglect, a sense of discrimination, a sense of isolation, as if she is an object, she has to be hidden. She has to be kept away from the other men. They are lustful gauges. While doors keep opening inward again and again inward. But finally, the woman is finding that she has to find out her own existence and she discovers the doors are keeping, keep opening inward and inward. When she is exploring herself in this manner, she finds that within all uncertainties of her life, within all apprehensions of her life, within all restrictions of her life, there is something to be celebrated and that is her womanhood and that is her this precarious existence this precarious condition so the woman is an instinctive creature she is living in that instinctive uncertainty and celebrating it through uncertainty she is trying to explore the certainty and in this way, the poet is giving tribute to the self-expression of woman, the self-revelation of woman, the self-celebration of woman, in spite of all the patriarchal impositions, all the patriarchal seclusions of female entity. Thank you. From this poem, which questions can be asked or it can be discussed? Discuss the symbolic significance of Parda in Imtiaz Dharkar's poem, Parda 1. How does it become a symbol of alienation and seclusion of women? Another question, explain the agony of a Muslim woman under Parda system as discussed in the poem. Or, Write a critical appreciation of the poem Parda 1. And for other questions, questions can be asked on the symbol of Parda in this poem or all the symbols that are being treated by the poet in this poem.